checking that you lock the door, making sure the stove is off, washing your hands a lot, being very neat. People joke about obsessing over these things, but the truth of the actual condition, obsessive compulsive disorder, is nothing like this. It can be debilitating and life altering, but as you're about to see, there is hope. I think a lot of it was in hindsight. It's only in looking back that Andrea Martin can see the truth, one that began to take shape when she was young. I would go back and reread things a lot because I'd be afraid that I missed something. And then it just kept getting worse, like in college and like in my mid to late 20s was when it just started getting like what I felt kind of out of control. You know, I was very worried about things like security in my home. I was checking the locks all the time. I wasn't driving. It was uncomfortable because if I didn't wear the right clothing, I would be thinking about it all day long. Dave Saunders' intrusive thoughts drastically impacted the direction of his life. I went to med school and I dropped out and I had started having these weird showering rituals. Um, you know, I started taking long showers in the morning um, and feeling like it was hard to get out of the shower. Martin and Saunders have obsessive compulsive disorder, OCD, an often misunderstood disorder thought to be a need for neatness or order or hand washing. It is sometimes portrayed as a personality quirk, a misconception that is harmful for people who really do have OCD, making it harder to be taken seriously or to get help. And if you are washing your hands, it's a little bit lucky because you'll get referred right away for the proper treatment. If your OCD isn't involving, you know, symmetry, arranging, checking, or some of those things that come to mind, then people wait years. The average is between seven and 12 years between onset of symptoms and accessing effective treatment. Emory psychologist and OCD specialist, Dr. Jordan Caddy, says OCD can be debilitating and life limiting, and that those with it are plagued by unwanted, intrusive, even frightening or violent thoughts they cannot shake. That's the obsession part. The thoughts are so disturbing and upsetting that people feel driven to do something repetitively to alleviate the feeling. That's the compulsion. Folks will notice that they have to do things in a certain way. I have to drive a certain way. I have to check this many times. I have to feel like my hands are clean before I walk away from the sink and turn it off. Compulsions can be invisible to others, such as avoiding something, replacing a negative thought with a positive thought, or saying certain words in your head. While all of us have intrusive thoughts every day, OCD involves paying a lot of attention to them, fearing that the thoughts are important or harmful, and needing to do something to make the thoughts or anxiety go away. This interferes with a person's daily life. If you really, truly have OCD, like doing those things can be maddening because it's like, like I'm never clean enough. It's never organized enough. It's never, I'm never safe enough. Um, I've always gotten a lot of intrusive thoughts about just really bad things happening. In Martin's so case, might... intrusive, fearful thoughts about driving led her to give it up. I just kept having these images of getting in a horrible accident and like being in pain and like dying on the side of the road or, you know, all these kinds of things are like, um, sometimes it might have been about accidentally hurting someone else. Martin also did something sometimes associated with OCD. Uh, she picked at her 30. skin. At one time I picked at my chin so bad that I just, it was like, it was basically like a scab like all over my chin. And hair. I would kind of like just like go like this, like scratch and just like rub at my scalp. And then the more and more I did it, it would end up breaking the hairs off. Um, I was doing it so badly that I had like little spots in my part that were literally like missing hair. Like they looked like tiny little bald spots. Hi, are you on your way? On this day, Dave's having a hard time getting to his appointment with Dr. Caddy. She takes a few phone calls in a 15 minute period. Well, that makes sense. Cause you're kind of doing something different than what your thoughts are recommending to you. He arrives. Hey, Dr. Caddy. Hi, how Hi. are you? I'm well, how are you? I'm well, thanks. Come Good. on in. Good. So 
you mentioned getting here was a little bit of a difficult experience. What was the trigger that you, knew, that you noticed? Um, I don't know, I guess just having my intrusive thoughts. When the thoughts came in, what were they about? Um, like, like causing harm to myself or, you know, somebody else. And so what and like, discomfort did you have to have today? When you started feeling uncomfortable having these intrusive thoughts, what did your OCD want you to do? Um, kind of avoid. This is how OCD um, can turn a seemingly simple thing, a trip to the doctor, into an impossible task. According to the NIH, over 2 million people in the U.S. have a diagnosed form of OCD. But keep in mind, it's very underdiagnosed. Up to 80% of people with severe OCD also have depression. It took Saunders and Martin years to get diagnosed. Both did ERP, exposure therapy with response prevention, shown to be effective in treating OCD. ERP, or exposure therapy, involves approaching the feared stimulus really gradually and systematically in a doable, may, in a doable way so that safety learning can take place in the brain. Patients face no their fears and gradually break relationship that connection between anything. the thoughts and the so, action um, that follows it. Yeah, Only know. learning to operate without rituals can break the cycle of OCD. There are some specific circuits that are um, connected differently or that are communicating differently in brains that have OCD and brains that don't. Research has shown OCD can run in families and involves abnormal fear processing and problems in communication between the front part of the brain and deeper structures of the brain, such as the basal ganglia. Brains of people with OCD behave differently in specific ways. They pay more attention to certain fear triggers and they have trouble tolerating uncertainty and they tend to overestimate how dangerous the situation may be. Brains with OCD also learn differently because of differences in reward processing, they have trouble choosing long-term benefits over short-term relief of anxiety. Safety learning is also impaired, which means high levels of anxiety and fear persist until the person gains enough practice without rituals for safety learning to take place in the brain. In some people, the brain circuits involved in OCD become more normal with either medications that affect serotonin levels or cognitive behavior therapy, like ERP. With affirmations stuck to his walls, Dave does as he has written. He keeps going. Andrea is driving, working, in a long-term relationship. Things that once seemed impossible are now part of a fulfilling life one that will always present challenges. I just don't want anybody to ever feel like they have to do it alone or that there isn't any hope because things can definitely get a lot better and it's never going to go away, but you can get to a place where you can manage it. Andrea Martin and Dave Saunders are now advocates in the OCD community. The International OCD Foundation is just one place where you can find resources and help.